Good Monday morning, my friends. Uh, it's been a little while since we talked, and I hope you're enjoying a good start to your week and basking in the reality of the love and kindness of our God and Father. Um, last time we started looking at different names of God, and of course we started with Father, that overarching name that speaks so much to us. Our foundation scripture is Psalm 19. They who know him by his name, what will put their trust in him? And he wants us to dig in and find out who he really is. Jesus came to reveal the Father to us. And sometimes we overlook the reality of that. Jesus came and paid a high price that you and I could be called sons of God. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a minute. I was thinking this morning of Psalm 103. We we ended thinking about that last time where we spoke about the fact that Moses knew his ways, the people of Israel as acts. Now Moses saw what God did, but he understood the why. He married the why God did things because he loved us and he was drawing us always to himself. Picking up right after that verse, it says this in Psalm 103, 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy and loving kindness. He will not always chide or be contending, neither will he keep his anger forever and hold a grudge. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Aren't you grateful for that? I know I am. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great are his mercies and his loving kindness toward those who reverently and worshipfully fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Do we really believe that? We need to. As a father loves and pities his children, so the Lord loves and pities those who fear him with reverence, worship, and awe. He knows our frame. He earnestly remembers and imprints upon his heart. We are just dust. He knows our frame. It says in Psalm 139, I'll read it to you. I love this. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously wrought as if embroidered with various colors. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. In the depths of the earth, a region of darkness and mystery. Your eyes saw my unformed substance and in your book, all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape when as yet there were none of them. That, that picture of the Lord uh, hovering over us in the womb of our mother is the same word we have when the Spirit hovered over the deep at the very beginning of Genesis. What to bring order out of chaos. The Lord himself, that's why life is so important in the womb. The Father himself has brooded over and hovered over the womb of your mother so that you would come forth just the way you are. Strengths and weaknesses all together. I love that. I think about Jacob and Esau when they were in the womb. If you remember, uh, the Lord spoke to her because there was great struggle within her womb. And he spoke to Rebecca and he told her that the beginning of two nations were within her womb. And, and he really spelled out their life, that the older would serve the younger and it goes on. It's a great story. Read it sometime. But what I want to zoom in on today in this issue of father is a picture we have, and we may have looked at this together, but it's worth looking at again. This picture that Jacob was convinced he could never receive his father's blessing unless he went in pretending to be his brother. So many of us live in pretense, thinking if I could be like someone else, then the Lord would really accept me and maybe even could use me. No, he wanted one just like you. We don't have to pretend to be someone else. We can take the mask off and go in just as we are because he knows all about us already. He wanted one like us. We are not compared one to another in the Father heart of God. He doesn't look at us and say, oh, I wish you could be like so-and-so, or why didn't you get that talent? I might could have used you then. That is not our God. That is not our Father. I can tell you, in a, being raised in a family of six, and you've heard me say I had a fabulous father, and in our home, the one thing we all knew is their children, Charlie and I and his Birch's children, we were not compared. We stood alone before them. No one was ever told, oh, I wish you could be like your sister, or why aren't you more like your brother? And that is a glimpse 
into the Father heart of God. He loves us unconditionally. When we come to him, he knows us exactly as we are. And yes, he wants us to grow, but he never takes his love from us. He has set his love upon us. I love that. I was thinking of a song, uh, and most of you probably know it, but I want to read the lyrics to you. It's called, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make this wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. You know, at Easter, and we're coming up on Easter, we, we really zoom in on the physical cost to Jesus to hang upon that cross, and I can't even imagine the horror of it all. But I've often thought the greater horror was when the Father turned his face away because he could not look on sin. The utter place where, where Jesus felt forsaken. I think that had to be far worse than the physical pain. I love this particular line. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away. As wounds which mar the chosen one bring many, what? Sons to glory. That's sons and daughters. You know, in the Bible when it says sons, it's talking about all of us. Those wounds, that woundedness, the place where the Father turned his face away, gave right for you and I to get, go to him face to face. His turning away gave us a right, and Jesus paid that price for us. How great the Father's love that he would give Jesus, and how great Jesus' love for his Father that he was willing to go there for you and for me. You know, the Lord always wanted a family, and that's what we are. We're children in the family of God. It says in 1 John, it's a wonderful passage. Most of you know it, I'm sure. Again, from the Amplified. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has given and shown and bestowed on us that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted as the children of God. And so we are. The reason that the world does not know or recognize and acknowledge us is that it does not know or recognize or acknowledge Him. Beloved, we are even here and now God's children. It is not yet disclosed, made clear what we shall be thereafter, but we know that when he comes and is manifested, we shall, as God's children, resemble and be like him, for we shall see him just as he really is. As a little girl, I loved it when people told me I looked like my daddy. I pray as life goes on, I continue to look more like my father God who indeed Jesus let us know we can call Abba, Daddy. He is our Father. He longs to look at us face to face. So often we hide, afraid we won't measure up. One of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh. And yes, it is that he's made provision for us. And we think of that physically very often in, in so many ways. But part of the meaning is Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider and he's provided that you and I measure up in him. We go in through the blood of Jesus and we are sons and daughters of the most high God. I'm not going to run from him. I'm going to run to him and thank him for who he is and all he is to you and to me. He has not changed. The Bible says there's no shadow of turning in him. We can put our trust in him as we know him by his name. He's our father. He's our Abba. He's our daddy God. Amen. I hope you have a blessed day. I'm going to go about my day cleaning and cooking and enjoying being a wife, a mother, a grandma, and thankful all day long for the goodness of God. God bless.